Before we start this video, a large thank you to Mohi Kali, Roberto, Pelinora, and Joey Hehe. Thank you guys for supporting this series. It is greatly appreciated. By the way, guys, I got a new microphone. Let me know what you think of it. If the volume needs to be adjusted or something like that, just let me know in the comments. And again, guys, thank you so much for your support. I hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, guys, we step in our project here now, and I'll go up to this enemy who I've taken the states off of, so he won't hit me. If I attack and try to lock on, as you can see, while I start doing the light attack, if I click the lock on button, I actually won't rotate towards the enemy unless I stop the attack chain briefly. And we don't want that. What we want is we want our character to rotate right before we open our damage colliders, and then um, stop rotating, sorry, right before we open the damage colliders, and rotate just a bit before that. Effectively making it so if you lock onto something you're rotating towards it with every swing of your attack in a combo chain So let's go to our player locomotion and let's look where we handle uh, the rotation here for now So this is actually called I believe in the handle movement uh, if we go down here You should be right. Yeah, okay, so right here it says if animator can rotate let's handle the rotation and that's great That will be great in all um, if there wasn't a slight problem So I'm just going to copy this and delete it from here and I'll show you why. We're gonna scroll back up here, and as you can see, it says here, if the player is interacting, we have to return. So that means right away, we're never getting to the uh, rotation logic if we're interacting, which is the case when we enter any attack animation. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to call this handle rotation um, on its own, basically on one of the update functionalities. So I'm gonna put um, this here and delete it and just use this if animator can rotate. I'm gonna open up some curly bracers here. And we're going to take the entirety of the function and we're just going to paste that into this bit up here. And the reason being is we're going to be able to rotate uh, during some animations, at least for a brief period in time. So I'm going to paste that right in there. That looks good. Now, I'm not sure if we need this. I'm just going to delete it and we'll see. I think we actually do use the delta in this though. Yep, okay, right down there. We use it in this bit of the function. So. You can put time delta time there if you want, but I'm just going to keep the float delta and pass it from the update method, and then I'm going to minimize this functionality. Okay, so let's figure out where we call handle movement. Okay, it's on the fixed update, as I thought. So I'm just going to put down here player locomotion dot handle rotation. I think that's private, so we're going to have to public that. Yes, it is. All right, let's save that. Now let's go back over here again, and let's try this again, handle, rotation, and pass the delta. Now I actually want to try something. I know it'll probably make the player look jagged, but just for experimentation purposes, I'm actually going to put this in the regular update method for just a second. I don't suggest you do this. I just kind of want to see if it will make the player movement stagger um, as it did if we didn't have the rigid body on interpolate and on the fixed update method for the movement. So I'm just going to put it right there. Um, now. As you can see, we're able to rotate now in the game when we attack, but we rotate and can't stop. It looks kind of silly. We're able to like dance and do like a little breakdown thing. So we're going to fix that. Let's go to the animator window and on the empty, let's add another reset animator bool. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to reset the um, bool can rotate, which we haven't made yet. So I'm going to add a bool up here on the animator. I'm going to call it can rotate. Next, we're going to put that up there below, right above can do combo. And I'm going to check uh, status yes. So when you come back to enemy state, you can uh, in fact, rotate. Now, in the player model, as you can see on the player uh, animator manager, we actually have a bool right there um, called can rotate. So, we actually want to make it so that bool is equal to whatever the bool is on the animator. So, we're basically dictating a rotation via the animator. Um, so, let's go ahead and set that up right now. I'm going to say player animator or animation manager. And looks like I have to actually call that on the player manager here. So, let's do that going to put it right up here. Okay. Player animator manager, player animator manager. Going to call that on awake and I'm actually going to um, take all the stuff here on the start method and drag out in the awake too. We're going to do a little housekeeping video soon, but um, basically I'm going to call all my references to other scripts on the awake from now on to keep it concise and consistent. So I'm just going to say player animator manager equals get component in children player animator manager great simple enough okay let's save that and let's go down here now on the update method and we're going to say player animator manager dot can rotate then we're going to say is equal to anim dot get bull can rotate 
Excellent. All right, let's save that. We still have a couple more things to do. Let's minimize all this. Now let's save this again and go over to the player animator manager. Now, as you can see, we have a, a can rotate and stop rotate function already true here. So I already created rather. I'm just going to delete the contents of them. And we're going to say anim dot set bool uh, can rotate. And then we're going to set to true on the can rotate function. And stop rotation, uh, obviously, we're going to say anim.setbool can rotate, and we're going to set it to false. Now, we're going to use these animation, um, or these functions, rather, as animation events. And we're going to use those on our attacks to dictate when we can and cannot rotate. But furthermore, we have to do one more thing, um, because we don't want to be able to go into an animation with the ability to rotate. So by default, let's just copy this here and then delete it and let's go to the animation manager which this class inherits from let's paste it back here and then on the the function play target animation we're actually going to say can rotate is equal to false because by default if you're playing an animation that locks you into the animation we don't want to be able to rotate unless specified by an animation event so we're going to set up the animation events on our attacks ourselves manually now in here we're going to say anim as simple can rotate equals false let's save that and now let's jump over into Unity and actually check out our model and go and edit some of our animations. But first, I'm just going to go into the game and make sure that this works as intended. We should not be able to rotate now. So if I attack, yeah, okay, I can't rotate. And then I can rotate when I'm done because the, uh, the script resets the bool to true after we go back to the empty state. Excellent. So it's going back here and then this is toggling here. And then from there, we are able to rotate just so that is clear. Next, I am going to go to the player model. I'm going to go to scene view, going to turn off my gizmos because it makes the screen look kind of cluttery. Going to go to the window, hit the animation, going to go over here and I'm going to pick the first two attack animations I have. I won't do them all in video because once I do a couple, you guys will see how it's done. So this is where I open my damage glider. I'm just going to come to a couple frames before that. Right click here. I want to be able to rotate, say right here. So let's add an animation event. Going to say can rotate. And then if I drag that forward, just two will say, I'll add an animation event here and then we'll disable the rotator, stop the rotation. So um, it's pretty straightforward. You just put them right there. I would put them right before your uh, damage collider is open. Of course, you can do whatever you want. I think this this is just how Dark Souls handles it. So on the attack two, let's go again, the same process a bit before the damage colliders open up. And then let's say can rotate. And then let's go a couple frames forward, even two or three. And then we'll say stop rotation. Now, you're going to be able to rotate depending on um, the rotation speed, basically. So the higher your rotation speed, the more of a rotation you will get. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's jump into the game here. And now if I hit the rotate button and see if I hold down the down key, I'm able to turn, but I'm actually holding the, down the S key. I'm not turning all that much. Um, so let's go to our player and the rotation speed right now is very low. It's on 10. So let's, let's just save the game. Let's set this to 18 and see what that does. And now if I jump back in here again and I attack, and I rotate. As you can see, I can almost turn all the way around uh, if I hit S on the keyboard. And turning to left or right will give me a full rotation uh, about 90 degrees. So I like having the rotation speed pretty high. That's just me. And now if I attack a person I'm locked onto, if the person were to move or run around while I was attacking and I kept comboing, I would combo into them as they were walking away, which is ideal. Now I'm going to move this uh, handle rotation back to the fixed update, which I suggest you did earlier, because if not, you're going to get some weird behaviors. I just wanted to see something. So I'm going to save that there, guys. And uh, this has been another episode of Create Dark Souls and Unity. If you like the series, don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment, because it genuinely does help my series get around. Also, peace is the YouTube algorithm gods, which is just good for you. And uh, if you're feeling super kind, check out my Patreon below. I will see you guys in the next one. We're very shortly going to do a housekeeping episode again, where we do some bug busting and uh, some cleaning of our code nothing's gonna get deleted we're just gonna reorganize some stuff and restructure and make it look more neat and tidy i was gonna do this video but i uh, really wanted to get this done too because this is very critical to our melee combat system so anyway i digress i will see you guys in the next one